Again, I want to welcome you to our full circle celebration as we celebrate how one congregation became two and is now one again. Through the years, uh, these congregations, which was Ross Avenue, uh, which became University Christian Church, which became Open Arms Christian Church, offered great ministry to our community. So today we want to celebrate those ministries, but most of all, we want to celebrate the many people who were a part of those great ministries. Many of those people are now part of this church family. In the video, you're going to hear from Reverend Ron Bird and from two leading lay people, Richard Collins and Bill Marshall. As this turns out, we filmed this video on Monday. Bill Marshall passed away uh, that late that night and into the next morning. So at least in part, this day of celebration and this video we make in memory of Bill. Uh, my name is Bill Marshall, and um, I'm a member of University Open Arms. And the reason I went to church there is because of Richard's daughter, who was in elementary school at the time with my daughter, Mindy. And Mindy came home and says, I want to get dumped. <laughs> and I said, dumped? She says, yeah, Terry's getting dumped and I want to get dumped. And I found out that Terry was getting baptized. So we joined the church and Mindy got baptized. And so that's how we became members and uh, enjoyed the people of the church and been here ever since. My, name, my name's Richard Collins. Uh, I was um, first involved in, in, in Ross Avenue Christian Church when my wife had been going there forever and she and I were dating and so I started going there and uh, so one thing led to another and after we got married well we joined that church. Uh, it was a real close-knit family Christian group of people that you enjoyed being around. Uh, when that first that church first started, the neighborhood around that church was a, was a blue collar organization. You know, everybody lived there were blue collar people. They were worked for the railroad or something like that. There was a big group of real of railroad people over in that area, and then through the years, the area started declining, and when when the area declined. The church started declining a little bit too, and uh, we got to where we couldn't have evening services, and the ladies wouldn't go, want to go over there in the daytime by themselves, and that type of thing. So, a lot of the stuff that we enjoyed for years had to quit going. Uh, we had a, a share group made up of about 13 or 14 people. We met real regularly. Uh, probably once a week at, at someone's home and, and shared different things. And we did some Bible study and, and uh, really enjoyed it. And, and through that group, we became the, <laughs> the mainstay or the, the, the pillars of that church because we were the, the people that were involved in that share group were also the people that were involved in doing all the church business. We had an area minister that uh, his office was in Ross Avenue Christian Church building. And so we had a lot of contact with him and he knew everything going on in the church. And we had a meeting of the share group one night and he sent a letter to us and wanted us to read it. And what this letter boiled down to was, and he quoted, I don't know, some famous general or something. And he said, what y'all need to do is to lead, to follow, or get out of the damn way. <laughs> so we talked about that for a while and decided that it was time for us to, to do newer, better things. And so that's when we decided to close Ross Avenue up and, and do something else. And so we closed it up at that time. And from that point, we decided that we wanted to start another church somewhere in Tyler. There was a, a lady and had an estate called the Parish Estate. And uh, her dream was to have a, a Christian church in all four corners of the city. And so we thought, well, we've got the big one downtown, we could do a small one somewhere else. And so we started working on it and uh, had a uh, organizational meeting. And, and from there, we, we got started. And that was 
that one was going to be that one was the university christian church we bought some property out by the university named the church after we went through all kind of names what we wanted to do it ended up naming it university christian church which is quite apropos and uh, we bought eight acres uh did all the clearing on the lot ourselves uh one of the members of the church, Larry Davis, had a, a business where he had caterpillars and and all that dirt moving machinery and everything. So he got out and, and leveled everything. And one of the funniest things that I saw was another gentleman in the church, uh, uh, Ray Kendall. Mm -hmm. uh, he was an engineer out at the, at that time with the chest hospital, but it's the UT out on 271. And he wanted to do it. And Larry said, well, well Ray, uh, you know, you got to know how to use these things. He said, man, I'm an engineer, you know, kidding around with him. He said, there's not any machine I can't handle. <laughs> and, and Ray got on that thing and started digging holes. Larry had the, the ground just as smooth and nice. And Ray got on that thing and started digging holes and making mounds. And so finally we got him off of it, put Larry back on it, got everything going good. But from there, we... we uh, Started working on it and forming all kind of committees and getting started. You, you came in about that. Yeah, time. I was I was at the Seven Day Adventist Church. Yeah, that's right. You, we met several places before we bought the eight acres. Uh, we had an organizational meeting down at Lou's Hat Shop. I don't remember if you were down at that no. one. And we had forty or forty-five people show up for it. Some people from Christ, First Christian Church was going to come in and, and, and lend us there knowledge in their backs to help us get started, which was a blessing. And from there, we met in some building downtown, which was a, they played cards or dominoes or something. And then uh, we met there a while, and then we started meeting at the uh, funeral home, Lloyd James Funeral Home, which uh, was an experience in itself. We had, uh, you know, they had all kind of rooms where they kept people for their funerals. and. <laughs> And at that time, we probably had about 10 or 12 kids who were very, very inquisitive. <laughs> and so one of the job of the elders of the church is that we had to post them, one elder at each one of those rooms to make sure that the kids did, didn't go in there where all the people were. And so uh, that was really interesting that we had to post guys in front of the rooms where they kept the, the people there. But, uh, that worked out really well, and then from the uh, funeral home, we started meeting, and we made a deal with the Seventh Day Adventists around on the East Loop. Started meeting in in their church, yep. which worked out real well. That's where I first came. Yeah, you you started there. Uh, the membership grew. We helped them, and they helped us. Uh, you had a little story about the coffee, didn't you? About yeah. Where, well. They were telling me the story, Seventh-day Adventists do not drink coffee. So the church thought, well, we can't make coffee inside the building. So they made the coffee outside in cold weather or whatever. And somebody came by, was a member, said, no, y'all can drink all the coffee you want. We just don't drink it. <laughs> you can make it <laughs> out inside. make it inside. You had to make it out here in the winter. So uh, we helped them out. They helped us out. And we stayed there quite a while while we were building the building. And yep. So it worked out real well. Uh, I going back to uh, Ross Avenue. I guess one of the most exciting things that uh, came to my mind about that church and the people was the day that we decided to close that church down, and uh, and in the, and the letter that uh, the area minister sent us, which got us all thinking and praying and and got busy. He said, "Lead." Follow and get out of the way, and that's what we started doing. Worked out real well. At Ross Avenue, uh, my wife and I are quite young, and some of the older gentlemen, <laughs> which, you know, I was, what was I, 19 or 20, so if anybody that's 30 years old was an older gentleman, talking to me one time about being an elder. And, uh, I, you know, I told him I didn't think that I was really worthy or capable capable of being an elder in the church. And so they talked to me for quite a while and I made the decision to, to become an elder of uh, Ross Avenue Church. And 
That's one of the things that sticks out into my mind is the, the responsibility that I got at such a young age is to be a leader of a church. And so that's the one, th one of the things that really sticks in my mind about that church. Well, I remember you were chairman of the board when they closed it, right? Right. So I became, a, I was chairman of the board when we closed it, and I became chairman, chairman of the steering committee when we started the uh, university. And I was the chairman of the board at university when we closed it. <laughs> So I, guess, I thought I was. I wasn't sure. We switched well, out a we, lot. You and I switched back a lot. But uh, I guess if I got famous for closing churches down, you would want me to be a member of your church. Right? Yeah. Uh, Ross Avenue building was quite a building yes. for churches back then. It had a big, huge basement and a large fellowship hall. And it was two-story. It, it was an interesting building, and it had a lot of good memories there. Yeah, at the fellowship hall. Well, that's what good they found out I could cook briskets, and so I was making a lot of briskets for the church at times. There's a, another humorous thing. Uh, J.A. Barnett was an elder and member of uh, Ross Henry Church, and any time we would have a, a fellowship dinner or anything like that, Barnett would bring his ice cream freezer, you know, the old crank freezers. He would bring that full of some type of ice cream, and a lot of times it was a, an exotic ice cream, you know, it wasn't just vanilla or strawberry. And so we kept asking for his, you know, his recipes, oh, no, 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 you wouldn't give that. And so one time, I guess he was running late or whatever, and somebody else was running uh, early, and they went by an ice cream place. O'Neill's. O'Neill's ice cream place on Glenwood, and walked in there, and... Uh, J. A. Barnett had his ice cream freezer in there, and Mr. O'Neill was filling it full of his ice cream. <laughs> and so we found out we busted him real quick there. That was the talk of the church for several weeks that that uh, Mr. Barnett was trying to skim everybody that he made. He made all that delicious ice cream, but it was O'Neill's ice cream. We got that off the ground and got it running and sold the the Ross Avenue building and uh, several of the men handled all the paperwork of church, you know, of buying, buying the, the land and the property and the building and and deciding, you know, what kind of building we wanted. And that was a, a lot of interesting meetings mistakes. <laughs> and, and mistakes. But uh, we got it built and got moved in. Uh, we had a, several ministers that came to the church. We had one minister that was there twice. Uh, John Sperling. John Sperling. Uh, he was there, and then he left to go somewhere else, and then, I don't know. But no, actually, when we started at University, our preacher was Tim Peter Sook. Well, that, he was the first really hired yeah. minister. But when we started that church, we had a minister that came from Ross Avenue, Jack Timmons, and he really took over helping us get uh, university started. I always said, uh, and we knew, and he kept, you know, he kept saying, you know, we get this church started, I'm leaving, and y'all need to hire another minister. And so I always kidded him about, I, I've never seen anybody work so hard to work themselves out of a job. Because <laughs> he really worked hard to get us, get that church started. And so, and then uh, we hired uh, Peter Sook, which was a blessing to everybody involved with, with him and that knew him and uh, continued to to grow and and uh, the church grew the membership grew uh, financially we were on and off you know we'd have good years and not so good years and then we'd catch up but it, it was a very interesting thing is to start a church from ground up oh, oh we yeah. don't want to mention yeah ron, ron bird got there and he he stuck around a long time i then, think i think ron bird was probably the uh kept the church together, kept it growing. He got it financially in good shape. And it was just uh, a great minister. First thing uh, that I told Ron when he came, uh, we had had an interim minister and uh, she tried to do things different, you know, and to get us going. And, and one of the things that she did, which caused a problem at the church, is that she came down and moved the communion table 
it was up against the choir division and she came and moved the communion table out where she could stand behind it. Well, that was not the way it was always done. <laughs> and so there was some flack about that. And so when Ron came, he said, oh, what kind of advice can you give me about this place? And I said, well, the first thing is you don't want to move the communion table. <laughs> and so from that day on, that was a joke between me and him about, well, come on in, but do not move the communion table because that could start trouble. Yeah. So here we are now, and actually, since we've closed the church in White House, we sold it to another church of which we donated to First Christian. And um, I don't know, we also, Richard and I together, found other Christian churches in the area that we have helped send money to that we had surplus or whatever you want to say. We've done, we've done a lot with what was left over. So, I don't know. Uh, you know, usually when churches die down and have to close up, it's because they run out of money. Mm -hmm. well, well, we didn't. <laughs> we didn't run out of money. We, uh, the way that church got started is that we, we saw, and the reason we shut university down is that the University of Texas at Tyler wanted to buy our property. Well, they did, and I dealt with all of them about that. And we ended up getting, what, a million two, yeah. something like that for the property. And so we took that money, and that's what we started uh, open arms with. But then it ended up that was nothing but a bunch of us old people that were there. And we, it, we just kept going on, and we knew that there was so many wonderful things that we could do with that money besides paying gas, water, and lights, and salary at a church that we could see wasn't going anywhere. So uh, again, we got together and decided that uh, we needed to shut it down. And so we shut it down, closed it down, and they gave Bill and I the responsibility of liquidating the church as far as the furniture and the building and everything, and the money that was there. So. So what we did, we decided to split it up among us. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so at that point, we ran into that other congregation. They were renting a, a space in White House. At the Tasker building. building. And, uh, and they that, were getting moved out. Yeah, and they, they needed a place. They needed a place, and they came to us and wanted to rent it. We decided what we needed to do, and we came up with this idea, is that we, we would give that building to First Christian Church. They wouldn't be, and then they would sell it to that congregation that we were working with. But it seems to be, I haven't heard any difference that it's working really well. So no news is good news. Open Arms started and ended, and we're back at First, First Christian Church. But First Christian was at a different location when they when it all started too. So. Yeah. Feels really good. There's a lot more people. <laughs> a lot and more people here, a lot more activities, a lot more things for everybody to do. And more kids running around, and we figure we'll see them one of these days as elders and preachers, and et cetera, et cetera. That's one thing that, that uh, a memory of uh, University Christian Church is that we had a youth group, and out of that youth group, we'll have to ask Ron how many, but out of that youth group, it's like four or five ministers came out of that youth group, and that was something we were really, really proud of. But we'll have to ask Ron how many, but there was a number of, of kids that became ministers. His son, and uh, so anyway, that was real heartwarming to have all that happen. So, uh, the Christian church came out, the original Christian church, uh, came out of First Church and became Ross Avenue. Ross, <laughs> Ross Avenue Church. And out of Ross Avenue became University. university. And out of University came Open Arms. And out of Open Arms became the other congregation, which is a, uh, don't know. Don't know what they really are, but anyway, that church and then back, we're all back to First Christian Church. So we just made the big circle and came back. 
which I guess that's what was supposed to be. That's what happened. August of 1990, I came to Tyler and interviewed at University Christian Church with the search committee. And Bill Marshall was the chairperson of the <laughs> yeah. search committee. Let's get it right here. <laughs> who, was, who was chairman of the board? Chairman of the board was Richard Collins. No. And Martha no. Marshall, and then Richard Collins after that. Uh, because Judy O'Donnell was the interim minister. And the first person I visited when I came here was this guy in the hospital. He was in the hospital. I don't remember what was wrong with him, but it wasn't too serious. Obviously, he's still alive. <laughs> and Judy O'Donnell introduced me to these guys, and I interviewed with the committee on a couple of occasions, and they were desperate for a minister. And, uh, and we knew he'd work cheap. I worked cheap, and so I came from Gladewater to Tyler with my lovely wife, Tanny, and my two little boys. Jordan and Joshua. We had about, I'd say the average attendance at that time was about 40 people when we came in uh, 1990. And over the years, we just decided to stay. Anytime we would think about moving, Annie taught school. She taught in Troop and White House for her entire career until she retired. And in 2017, after 26 years, um, I retired. All, the, all those times we thought about moving and we never did, we never regretted that. So we had a long history with all these people and uh, it was a beautiful thing. And so the church basically survived for 40 years and grew. We grew from 40 to averaging over 120 in attendance. And it, did all kinds of outreach programming and worked with First Christian Church here because we had been original mission church out of this church that goes back to Ross Avenue in the early 50s. And I always had a good relationship with the ministers here and um, built a good youth group. Jordan was the regional youth representative for the Southwest region. We had numerous young people who were uh, on the camp board of the CYF and helped plan all those activities. And the church grew with youth. And we had several of them that made ministers. Jordan is an ordained minister in the Christian Churches of Christ. Joel Byers is the senior pastor now at Central Baptist Church here in Tyler. They came through our church and up through our youth group. And uh, Derek Cooper has a PhD and is an ordained minister. Went to school in Philadelphia. He came up through the church with Robert and Gail and his wonderful parents who were great members of our church. So we had numerous young people who did wonderful things and continue to do great things that grew up through our church. So we were blessed in all of those ways. We had people who were youth directors but most of the time, we just had people volunteer who did to do that. Tanny, uh, my wife, did that some, and we had other people. Tommy and Ginger Rees were two people that joined our church, and they were just a couple who volunteered to be uh, youth representatives and work with the youth. We did camp. I went to camp all through the 90s. Took Jordan with me when he was seven years old to Athens to camp. He grew up in the camp. I directed camps. Worked with Odin Latham, who was the area minister when I came here uh, to Tyler, and then uh, Philip Chaco became the area minister, and I was the uh, treasurer for the Northeast area through all of that through all of that time, uh, or most of that time, and um, we were enormously blessed and never regretted not leaving. We bought a, a first house we lived in was in. White House on Green Lane Trail. I told Tanny we better rent to see if this works out. <laughs> After we were there for two years, I said, I think this, this gig may last a while. So we bought a house and, I'm, uh, and we lived in it until Tanny died two years ago and I'm still living in it 30 years later and I'll be living in it when Burks Walker Tippett comes and gets me. <laughs> so it's been a good thing. It's been a good thing, a great blessing.
Judy O'Donnell was the interim minister and she wanted to move the communion table away from uh, the pulpit area out more and get behind it. And they had a big fight over it. And so my first Sunday there, we were in the office and we were gonna have a prayer before the elders and the deacons went in. And somebody mentioned, you need to move the communion table out and take the communion table over. And Mr. Collins said, I don't, I don't know that that's a good idea. And I said, let me just handle it my way. And I stood behind the pulpit and I gave a call to communion, invited everybody to participate, left the communion table there. And I think the communion table was still there when the University of Texas at Tyler bought it. <laughs> <laughs> bought the property and we moved all that stuff out. We left it right there the whole time and solved that problem and we never had any more problems with it. <laughs> Took me a while to uh, win the confidence of the people there. You know, you have to, people have to believe you and believe that you're not up to something. And once I was there for a while and they knew that I was serious about what I was doing and that uh, I was going to stay there and do my best, they followed me and we did wonderful things for 26 years well we uh we knew everybody i knew everybody we formed strong personal relationships with people uh, we were actively involved in the community the church had a strong outreach program we were connected to meals on wheels it was an on on-site feeding center fed about 40 people a day there we had uh, all kinds of groups that met in the church, including the University of Tyler, before it was a four-year school, their band practiced in our fellowship hall. Uh, what was the guy's name that was the band director? I can't remember his name. You remember his name? Wonderful guy. Oh, anyway. Off on us? No. No. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, we, we had a good relationship there with the University of Texas at Tyler when it was a two-year school. Meals on Wheels outreach program. We had a bridge club that met there uh, twice a, a week and all kinds of outreach activities. The task of Tyler Area Senior Citizens Group. Scouts. Scouts met there. And uh, when the Tyler Area Senior Citizens Group was trying to build a new building and eventually built the Ornella Center, uh, they needed a president and they couldn't find anybody and I wasn't really old enough, but I was 50 so they, made me the president of TASCA, <laughs> became the president of the Tyler Area Senior Citizens Association, and uh, the four and a half million dollar building was built over there just before I took that position, but over time eventually sold that and they moved out to White House, which still exists, and um, we just did all kinds of outreach programs, so I knew lots of people in Tyler, worked with lots of people and um, the church had a wonderful, vibrant ministry that uh, did a lot of different things in the community. And we, we really didn't know when we knew that I was gonna retire, I told the congregation, I was about 58, I was gonna retire when I hit 62, because I had uh, been a part of the pension plan of the Christian church, and I was gonna be able to retire at 62 and take care of Danny. And, um, when we, when I told them that, I said, the university may be interested in buying this property because it's right here close. And sure enough, it couldn't have been two weeks after that, somebody from the university called me and wanted to know if we were interested in selling the property. And I said, yeah, they might be. And conversations began and that's why we ended up selling the building and the eight acres of land that was associated with it to the University of Texas at Tyler. And they didn't really know what to do and I told them, come to First Christian Church if you don't want to start a new church. If you want to start a new church, start that. We invited Hope uh, Partnership. Uh, Rick Morris is the president of that, was at the time. Uh, and they formed new churches within the Christian Church, Disciples of Christ out of Indianapolis. They came down and helped the church talk about how to form a new church if they wanted to do that. Some of them did that and some of them came over here to First Christian. And then the pandemic hit, and that created all kinds of challenges and problems and older congregation in a pandemic, and they decided that they, the failing health of people, that they would sell that property get, or dispose of that property and come all the way back to where we originally started in 1952 with the Opal Parish Estate who gave the money 
to start building, uh, uh, you know, churches in Smith County. And so it's full circle. Started in the early 50s, went to Ross Avenue, University Christian, and now back here. And the church, I, obviously I didn't have anything to do with that because the Lone Ranger had already ridden off into the sunset and it was left up to Tonto. <laughs> <laughs> and Tonto got together and they uh, basically gifted the property to First Christian. And um, so it was a gift back. That's where the full circle comes. All that money that came in to begin all these outreach programs now has come all the way back. And so there's been a full circle of ministry to the community of Tyler and Smith County, and we continue with that ministry here. And all the resources that were created through all those years are now back here where they can continue to birth new things, do new things, and continue in the 21st century with new forms of ministry that we never dreamed of at that time. We, we, have a lot, we had a lot of people over the years, you know, that are no longer with us that were very, very instrumental in all the things that we did. Charlie and Barbara Folsom, uh, Jimmy, they, Clayton. Jimmy Clayton, they all passed away. Of course, Jimmy Clayton's daddy was a disciple minister, Shuttlesworth, and her family go way back in Tyler. And uh, Charlie and Barbara Folsom were plants from Michigan. But um, they were both elders in the church and actively involved. And so we had so many people. We had a singing group at one time called the Good Old Omen. Richard was in that group. And uh, we recruited a guy named David Huffine, who was a independent Christian church guy out of Dallas Christian College, who was a gospel singer who we brought into the church. He was my neighbor, actually, uh, in White House. And he became our song leader for eight years. And I had an old boy wander in off the street one day, uh, Dr. David Holliday, who's going to play Sunday. He's coming to stay with me and play the piano. He became our music director. Apple Birch was my organist for 20 years. I had the same secretary for 20 years, Beverly Roberts, who's now a member of this church. And so we had these people that stayed with us for long periods of time and uh, we nurtured all those relationships. And um, that's probably one of the reasons we were able to maintain our composure and success because we knew everybody and everybody loved each other and we overlooked our <laughs> overlooked faults of people uh, and mistakes that we might make because of our strong relationships we had with each other.